everybody, welcome back to the Real Estate of Mind Show with your host, Glenn and Amber Schwarm. Hello, everybody. Where we help everyday people create wealth through real estate investing. Now, if you're watching, if you're just listening, and ignore this. But if you're watching, just understand that our backdrop is not our normal backdrop because we're not in our studio in New York. We're actually at our new home in Florida and we're glamping on an air mattress and and we're in the ugliest room in the house. Why are we in the ugliest room in the house? The rest had, of the house is actually quite pretty. And it, this room is because like it, in desperate need of help. Because it had, it's the office of the guy that we bought it from and it has hardwired internet. That's why. Oh, that's why. So yes, that's why. So I didn't want to take a chance with Wi-Fi because I didn't know. The the uh, intercoastal waterway is right outside, but no one cares about that. But I just want to let you know. So if you see the weird backdrop and weird lighting, you'll know. So maybe better to listen to this one than watch. So, hey, listen, we have got a great guest on today. You're going to talk about his success in the commercial space and what he's done. And uh, I'm going to try and get the name right. So here we go. So I want to introduce Javier. Hinojo. Oh, man, that's perfect. Perfect. I said it right. Good night. That's great. Yeah. So, yeah. The best way, best, you, you've been the best at it. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's going to be fun. So listen, tell, tell our listeners, you know, a lot of folks we have listening are um, new or they want to get started or they've done a few houses, that kind of stuff. They're not kind of at the levels that, that we're at with doing hundreds of deals. And you and I met through uh, Collective Genius through our mastermind that we're in. You've been in for a few years longer than us. We've, we've been in for just about a year and a little over a year. And um, tell, tell our listeners a little about you. Sure. Uh, my name is Javier. I know I'm in um, Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm originally from Texas. And I started doing uh, real estate. Yeah, where, where from Texas? Where in Texas? Uh, I'm, I'm West Texas, El Paso. Okay, I'm from DFW. Yeah. So, you know, Hey, we're just neighbors like 10 hours away, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. You know, we're neighbors. It takes like 12 hours. A little different climates in those areas. Too, oh right? yeah, for sure. <laughs> and, um, uh, so anyway, I, I got started about six and a half years ago. Uh, took one of those, um, 35,000 weekend seminars, uh, yeah. the rich dad, poor dad paid for that. And, uh, just learned enough to be dangerous. And, uh, I started flipping right off the bat. They didn't really have any money or any credit. I was pretty much broke. And um, we made like seventeen thousand dollars in our first flip, and so did was, we. So did we. That was our first flip <laughs> yeah, too. Yeah, seventeen grand. Yeah, yeah. Seventeen and, two. Uh, <laughs> I looked at my partner and I said, "Man, we got to do a lot of these. This is not. This is not like a lot of money, you know. Like I have to do like, you know, we got to do fifty of these. You know, let's make some money." Yeah. So, um, you know, long story longer. Uh, we at, at the peak where my single family flipping business. I was flipping like fifty properties a year. You know, I was holding. I was wholesaling. You know, close to a hundred in, in in Raleigh, in Tampa. In Dallas, Austin, my hometown of El Paso. And um, in late 2019, I was at a collective genius meeting with my wife. And because I wanted to scale, right? I wanted to do 100 a year. And that was with guys doing 150 people wholesaling like 10,000 properties a year. I was like, man, this is insane. And then I realized that, um, that I had to get a new staff that I couldn't do with my staff. Mm -hmm. And uh, that I didn't really enjoy it, that I was in a scale to unhappiness. You know, that's the thought that came to my mind. It was really weird. Wait, I want to hear that again. So you were, you were scaling, but you were on a scale to unhappiness. Yeah. I just, cause wow. you know, I didn't really enjoy it. You know, it was like a job, you mm. know, I didn't, I was making good money, but I didn't enjoy it. Uh, my wife's a lot better flipper than I am. Like I, I, what I enjoyed, I just didn't have all the right systems, all the right process. I think I didn't have the right people in my team. That's basically what it come down to. Yeah. And if I had, had to start all over again, basically. And I said, okay, I got to start from scratch. And I said, well, why don't I just buy apartments? I'm going to start from scratch. Might as well just build the right team and buy apartment buildings. I didn't know any better. I just told my wife, hey, we're quitting. And I quit like the next day. You pretty much let her, I told everybody, hey, we're letting everybody go. Started selling all our houses. And um, it was late September, early October, 2019. And I said, hey, we're going to buy our first apartment building by the end of the year. I had no idea how, but sure enough, right? We bought our first building at the end of the year, 2019. How many units was that? It was a 63 unit in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Okay. So you, yep. you did this in 2019 and then 2020 hits. Yeah. Talk yeah, it's about, about 20 hits, right? So we're like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, get some uh, projects under my belt. We're about to close our first one in April and we're going to close it like in a week or two. And then the loan gets pulled, right? Because COVID, yeah. right? Like, everybody stopped lending, like, right. Stop. So then we went pretty much from like January to like July, like seven months with nothing. Right. But, but then if I really look back at it now, it's, it's, uh, it's been almost 12 months since, since we got that loan pulled uh, roughly. Um, we pretty much bought 628 units in the last 12 months. Right. If I really, wow, that's, that's, right a that's a lot, that's a lot That's how many, how many buildings is that? Um, that's uh, across seven properties. 
seven properties. So are you syndicating? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, we're syndicating. <clears throat> you know, we, um, you know, with, uh, we get limited partners. We syndicate um, on the smallest project. I own like, you know, nothing like 2% on the biggest project. I think I own like 30%. So tell, just, tell our I, listeners when, when I say syndicate, let me tell them what I, mean, I know what that is, but let me tell them from your perspective what syndication is. Because like, they might be going, what's, what's, what's syndicating? Yeah. What, what's that? No, for sure. Yeah. I mean, basically syndication is, hey, look, I'm going to, you know, you can syndicate a house, right? Hey, we're going to buy this house for $100,000. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I found the house, you know, Glenn's going to do the, the rehab. Amber's going to put some money in and raise some more money. So we all kind of partner together and we create like, you know, a, a partnership basically. And, you know, we buy the property together, right? It's just a syndication, right? Everybody, you have some limited, limited partners and you have general partners that pretty much do all the work and everybody gets us, uh, you know, share the pie. How do you structure that? You know, there's a million ways to structure stuff, you know, things like that, right? As long as you're getting um, whoever your limited partners are, which is your investors, um, as long as they're getting the return that they're used to getting or that you promised, you can structure that any way you want. You know, Javier, I, there's something you said that it was really powerful, on. I think people miss it sometimes, but you, you said that first you invested in yourself, right? You went to one of those workshops, you paid 35000 and we've all done it, right? Everybody who's at a top level really has probably done that. And if we haven't done it with one seminar type company, we've, we've invested with time, money, and school of hard knocks, right? We've invested in ourselves. That's a big part. And I think you said something that you and I, I will totally, I totally get you on this point. I'm sure a lot of points, but that I that gets you. You said, you know, I'm being around these guys at CG and this guy's doing 150. The first meeting I went to, there was a guy who spoke that was doing 6,000 deals a year. I don't remember who he was, but he, I, I think he was a speaker. And I'm like, did he say 6,000 deals a year? I'm like, did, what? Do you remember that guy or no? I forgot who he was, but it was a guy I that was there one time when one of the, um, was somebody from New Western was there. Um, yeah, is that what it was? I don't know he's if it like was. Australian the thing or, he was Australian or something, yeah. wasn't he? he yeah, well, was, there's a couple of guys. There's a guy from, um, um, she got from San Antonio, but I mean, yeah, there's some guys there that you know are doing some some crazy things. Sure. I, we, but I think I think when you're around those people, correct me if I'm wrong, but when you're around people that are doing it at a different level, I don't care what you're in in life, but if they're a different level and you start to hang around them, you realize quickly. Expand your vision. I'm not that different from that person. They just have a different vision, right? They just they just see something different than I do. And you know, I think some people have self doubt about that because our our show is a real estate of mind, right? We talk about. I tell everybody, I say we we believe you'll you'll never get your wallet right if you don't get your head right. You know, you've got to make sure you have that. Yep. And I think we all have a respect and see that we all can look at each other and know that we've had the crap kicked out of us enough to know we respect each other because we've all made it to a certain level that we know it's hard to get there. But then you're around other people and you're like, you're doing how many deals? And how do you do that? And what the hell are you talking about? You know, so all of a sudden, it doesn't it challenge you to think differently around different people? To level up. Yeah, for sure. And, 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 then, and then you go hang out, right? You go drink with them and you're like, man, Javier's not that smart. <laughs> you know, I feel the way about me. I don't get, I'm like, I'm, I'm not that smart. You're hanging at the bar with me till like three in the morning. You're like, man, how did this guy do it? He's like, you yeah. know, first, you know, you meet somebody and like, man, this guy's killing it. Then you get to meet him. You're like, man, he's just like me, you know, yeah, right. Exactly. And, um, and it's, it's amazing, right? As soon as you start hanging out with the right people, the right group, and you get, you get your own self out of the way, right? You start, you know, you got those limited beliefs about yourself. And as soon as you get rid of those, I mean, really the sky's the limit. You, you said something else too, that I wanted to touch on. And that was that, you know, you decided that you were scaling to unhappiness and that you quit the next day. I mean, that, that's a pretty, that's pretty rapid fire there. I so, guess. Yeah, I don't so, recommend but, that. But, but, but I, the, the point I want to make is sometimes people get really, you know, stuck in their own head and they, they have analysis paralysis and they overthink things and then they never make a decision, whether it's to change the course of their life or to even get started. And so I, I think, I think that it's really, really impressive that you were able to, you know, pivot so quickly and, and you, you knew, like you knew in your heart, this isn't where I want to be. And you were, you were ready to take action in a different direction. And yeah, so I, I mean, for really, sure. Yeah. And it is hard, right? Um, I mean, it's hard to do, right? I'm married. I got a whole bunch of kids. I forget. I got like three or five kids. <laughs> after, after a <laughs> while, you know, I'm know, the same way, man. All of them close enough. You know, it's okay. Uh, but, you know, it's hard because you're like, okay, you're making money and then you're just pretty much going to stop, you know? And, uh, you know, being, you know, being married with responsibilities, it was a little bit of a, you know, would I do it different? I don't know, right? But I definitely don't recommend to do that. Just, just yeah. not do that. 
Yeah, no, that's, I, I think that what you're doing is great. I think, so now, I think you just mentioned you're heading up to look for, are you, are you in the mobile mobile uh, home park now? Are you yeah, so that? we have, um, we have one mobile home park in Indiana and I'm actually going to go look at, um, we have another mobile home park. Uh, it's a portfolio of four parks and 300, a little bit over 300 pads um, in, um, in New York. So like North okay. to West New York, I guess, or is that West New, West New York? I don't Western, know. Yeah. Western New York. So, yep. what, so let me ask you, what is the draw? Cause I, I know a few guys that do that and I know uh, I'm friends with a few that do it on, on a bigger scale. I never see, I never looked into it too, too, but I'm interested. What, what is the big draw with mobile homes? I mean, it seems to me like it's a mobile home. It's like, I think, ugh. but then it's a lot about the lot rental, right? And that kind of stuff. Yeah, what, for sure. How, um, you know, the, the attraction. Yeah. If, if you own the trailers, a little bit more, more work because then you're, you know, you're start, you have to you know maintain them. So the least amount of trailers you own, the better. Now there's some companies out there that come in and they buy the park and they put all brand new trailers and do owner financing and they get great, you know, uh, tenants or, you know, or buyers and they you cash flow crazy, right? You can do it that way as well. But if you want to like kind of be hands off and especially since I live in North Carolina, they say this parks in, in New York, you know, I don't really want to own any trailers. You know, I want to have uh, just the lot rents, if I'm getting $350 lot rent, you know, 330 some pads, I mean, that, that, that whole park's worth like 11 million bucks, right? And, um, you know, it's just easy because it's just a pad. You don't have to replace anything. You're, I mean, you're, you're in charge of the utilities, right? Like if something happens, with, you know, got to make sure the roads are good and, you know, there's no trees falling on people's trailers, things like that. But it's very minimal, right? You'll be, honestly, you'll be like at 40% expense ratio. Really, you should be like at a 30 a little bit over 30% expense ratio. Mm -hmm. So it's cash cow. They, they make a lot of money and they're always going to be full for the most part, right? If you're in, a, in kind of in, in the right area, even if you say, Hey, New York, people are leaving New York. Yeah. They're living, they're definitely leaving New York, but there's really nowhere that you can right. go rent a place for 350 bucks. Yeah. Right. You know, you can bring a trailer. It costs you 20 grand and you can live there for 350 bucks, 400 bucks for a long time. I and mean, tell me not many places you can do that. Right. You know, I guess when you think about it too, you're, you're just like a lot of us, but you're using the, you're using the rental from these trailers to pay off a piece of land. I mean, to buy actual hard asset, right? In today's world, that's yep. become, a, I've been talking my, my son's 21. He's big in the crypto world and all that. And I'm like, it's just, I'm not, I don't understand. It's not a hard asset. I like to have a piece of property. You know, so I'm working on understanding him and I've, I've been yep. impressed with what he's teaching me, but I'm, but in the same token, it's, um, you're using just like McDonald's uses McDonald's rest restaurants to be the biggest landholder, one of the biggest landholders in the world. Same kind of thing, right? You're having all this, all this rents coming in for cash flow, but you're owning a piece of land, a big piece of land too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for sure. Right. And of course, you know, the, the project has to make sense. I thought, I told myself I'm never buying in California or I'm never buying in New York. And sure enough, there, there I am going to New York. Right? <laughs> well, it's the taxes that get you, right? That's what, yeah. yeah no, but we, but we it, know you, know, I, you know, if you get a, you know, super good deal, it's kind of hard, you right. know, I mean, it, it always, thing, yeah, if the numbers work, the numbers work. Yeah, yeah, we're buying this thing like at a tank cap, like going in it, and it's going to be, I mean, it's a stupid deal. So I said, okay. Uh, so I'm, tell our listeners when you say 10 cap, what that means. We know, but tell them what a 10 cap means. All right. So basically, um, if you were to put cash in, right? You yeah, yeah. If you put, back. put it this way, um, our purchase price. So you have, an, you have the, your gross income, right? You have your gross income and um, you, you subtract your expenses besides your mortgage payment, right? And then say it's five hundred thousand um, dollars a year, right? And if you were to buy it cash, you know that's kind of a ten percent cap rate. You know, if I can explain it that way, you had a ten percent cap because um, uh, it's a five million dollar purchase price. Sorry, five million dollars purchase price, and is and your NOI is um, five hundred thousand dollars a year. That's kind of like a ten percent, right? NOI is not net operating income. You guys listening? Net net operating income. Yep. Right. So you're making 500 K on your 5 million, yeah. right? So you're making 10% of your money, right? Yeah. But with these, you can get a loan, you know, say 25% down. So you can come in with, you know, a million five, whatever, something like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you're still cash flowing maybe 25 K a year. So now your, your cash on cash actually went higher because you right. only a million five. Yeah. And, um, you you have better, your NOI after your debt service or your actual net income is high. So you're, you, you're higher on your cash on cash. Um, it's a lot of cool stuff, right? Even if you get some, if you get the owner to carry some of the back end, um, sure. just the tax benefits, like on this particular park, we'll have, we'll do a cost segregation. Basically you can take a, a whole bunch of tax depreciation, like a yep. depreciation up front. It'll be like $2.5 million the first mm -hmm. year. 
Yeah. Right. And depreciation. So if you got a flipping business and you're making a million dollars a year net and you buy this mobile home park, guess how much taxes you pay? They yeah. go zero. Yeah. You know? So it's really, really cool. Tell people too. So I think, you know, was, we don't, we don't do any syndication right now. It's not, not, not what we're in our wheelhouse, but when you do syndication, you are essentially, I'm not sure how you structure, but I think a lot of guys structure where you'll take the loan out for the 75% of the value or something like that, or you want a partner or whatever, but you'll take the, the lion's share of the loan and then you raise capital for the down payment. So if you had to come up with one, yep. one and a half million, you raise capital and those people all get a piece of the pot or a piece, a piece of ownership, 1%, 3%, whatever the, whatever it works out to be. And they get, they get a cash on cash return on their investment. And do they have a guaranteed exit strategy when they leave? Do you have a seven year plan? Do you have a, yeah. you know, do you have a cash yeah, so there's a lot of different, yeah, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Some people uh, buy it and, you know, sell it in three to five years, three to seven years. Um, and then once you sell it, you know, from, you, from your gains, everybody makes the returns, right? Um, sure. I, you know, we have two properties like that that we'll sell in the next three years that we just bought, you know, like a month ago. Mm -hmm. The plan is to raise a rent and just hold it for three years and sell it. Okay. Ideally, that's a lot of work. You know, I'm still flipping properties, right? I'm still a flipper. I don't want to do sure. that. I want to be able to hold long term. So if you get a good enough project at a good enough discount, you'll be able to, you know, hold it for, you know, for a, for a long time. Mobile home park, give you an example, right? It's my next project. $5.4 million purchase price. Um, the current NOI is like 560. So um, uh, it's worth uh, at a seven cap rate, like for that area, it's worth like over about $7 million. That's what it's worth. And okay. I buy it from day one and have a million and a half instant equity. Yeah. But once I stabilize it, right, it'll be worth 11. And um, I'll go out and refinance it at 75%, 70% loan to value, right? Mm -hmm. I'll get back, you know, whatever. Say I get $7.5 million back from the bank. Um, if I'm all in for six, six and a half, you know, I get all my money back. Right. First loan and the first investor's money. And I still have money left over. Yeah. Right? And I keep that park forever with cash flow. Right. It's a, sure. basically it's like the Burr method, right? You buy a house for sure. 50K, you put 20K in it, it's worth you know a hundred and the bank gives you 75. Yeah. That's a no-brainer. <laughs> yeah. So we want to keep that, right? That, that's ideally that's the way we want to do it. And it's it's it, every structure is different with every project, but you know, we, we'll keep the investors in the project even after we pay them off and the refinance. Oh, is that right? You keep minute too, just to, yep. for for equity appreciation or something? Yeah, I mean, just you know, just after that, your returns in infinite, right? You made your you made your 12, 14 percent cash on cash, a 25 percent total return in two, three years, and then you get all your money back, and you still get a little piece of the pie. Yeah, you know, as long as we own it, and then when we sell, you still get some more money. So yeah, right. it's really cool. Well, that's great. What do you think you want to focus on going forward? You want to do more mobile homes? You want to do more apartment? And I wonder, did you get yeah. did you get hit at all with COVID? I mean, with all the you know, we're we're in New York, and it's still there's still you can't evict anybody in New York. They can live for free in New York forever, apparently, with Lord Cuomo going on there. So, anyways, yeah. it's my world. But what's what's your you know, did you get hit at all with that with apartments? So yeah, I mean, every state is different, right? I mean, you know, a lot of states you can't evict, but if they're still breaking like you know your your lease, you know. Um, you know, you can try to go that route, right? As long as it's, you know, to, not, to, not in New York. Yeah. Well, yeah. So in most places, right. Um, yeah. So New York's a different animal for sure. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's only so much you can, you know, raise the rents and things like that too, which is, which is insane. Um, but you know, for the most part, we really haven't had a hard time. We just make sure we're super preactive, uh, proactive with our, um, property management companies that, that manage the apartments or the buildings at, or the parks. So they can, you know, talk to the, to the, um, all the tenants, right? Be like, Hey, here's all the help that we can get you. They actually help them fill out the forms and whatever they need. Here you go. Like they just pretty much do it for them because so, some, some, um, organizations out there, they'll pay you for miss rent and they'll pay you like two, three months in advance. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can get all that filled out properly. And if you got to be very proactive, you can go in there and tap into some of that, some of that money before it's gone. Right. Yeah. I want to say we're probably like 5% or less, 4% or less or so with uh, okay. like non-payment for COVID. We've been the same way, actually, believe it or not. not that a couple of people that aren't paying, you know, drives you nuts when they don't pay. We offered them five grand to move and they go, why? I make more to stay here. And you're like, mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, don't, don't like those tenants. I can't wait. The, someday the tide will turn. That's all I'm going to say. Someday the tide will turn on those guys. So that's the way it is. When you have your mobile home parks, now those people are owners. They're renting the land from you. So there's no like, well, I guess there could be an eviction process if someone doesn't pay the rent. Yeah, you still, you still have um, an eviction process, right? So you have, um, you know, your tenants, your multifamily, you kind of still have tenants with mobile home parks. 
Um, I really want to buy some self-storage. I just need to find some good projects um, just sure. because that you have no tenants, right? It's all right. like, hey, you don't pay, you lock it up, you sell your shit, yeah. done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Put you on but, storage wars. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, um, but, you know, it's just, you know, you still have your tenants, right? With uh, mobile home parks. You yeah. definitely do. Right. So you've done, you've done flipping, you've done wholesaling, you've done apartment, and now you're doing mobile homes. What do you like? What's the best thing you like so far? What do you think? So, you know, there's a lot of ways you make money in real estate, right? A lot of people do it a lot of different ways. What do, what do you like that, that you've done so far the best? Um, I definitely like the mobile home park for sure. Multifamily is super sexy, right? Everybody talks about it, you know, has yeah. the, um, you know, just, you know, you can buy bigger projects, right? You just, you can buy some big multifamily projects. Everybody likes those. They're proven. Um, I haven't done self storage, so I can't tell you about that. Definitely not flipping. But yeah. actually what I like to do the most is get a really, really good deal. Right. I mean, yeah. You know, we bought a 72 unit here, two and a half hours from my house for 1.3 million. And then the next day, I mean, we got it appraised because we bought it cash and then we went to do a reverse loan on it, kind of buy it cash first and then did a loan on it. Yep. It appraised for 3.4. Wow. You know, like, wow, like that's you awesome. know, stupid deals like that. Like I can totally screw it up and still make money. Like I like that. So tell, tell listeners how you find deals like that. I mean, that's, you know, we were people looking for yeah. houses. How do you find deals like that? So look, the last three projects that, I, that we bought, we bought three apartments in the last, uh, I don't know, five, six weeks. Uh, actually, all those came from networking, from mastermind events um, or just networking events, you know, like trainings, things like that. But basically, if you guys don't have a, a coach or not part of a mastermind or some kind of, uh, you know, yeah, it's cool. Go to your trios and all that. But you got a lot of new people there. If you go into a mastermind or like a higher level event, um, you're going to have a little bit higher quality um, investors there, right? You know, that you know, they pay some money to be there. The power so of proximity. Much, yeah, exactly. So they're, they're, they're in, you know, they're, they're doing something, right? Or they got the funds to do it, or they got something, some kind of background, or maybe not all of them, but a majority of them. Um, and that's how we got the, our last three projects, right? One through a, uh, an event we were at, somebody brought it, brought us a project, like awesome. And then, and then at a part of a mastermind that I'm at, that I'm a part of, one of the guys here had a project in Houston. He's like, Hey, you guys want to take this down? I go, sure. We paid him a fee. We paid him a wholesale fee. Sure. And, and then we bought one five, six weeks ago in Louisiana from a, fr uh, a good friend of mine that he was also part of a, like, uh, like an event that we were at and we became friends. We followed on Facebook, had a few chats over the phone and he found his project. I mean, really that's like the easiest way to find deals is just network. Just talking. Yeah. You know, I've, I, we don't do this cause it's not in our wheelhouse. But I'm always curious. What are wholesale fees roughly on apartment buildings? Are they, Tens of thousands, usually, or they hundreds. Well, of thousands? it's just like anything, right? It depends on, um, you know, what kind of deal do you have? Sure. Right, like even the one in the New York, right? I was actually gonna, I was wholesaling that um, to some, some, uh, uh, to a gentleman from uh, Rochester, and my wholesale fee was nine hundred and sixty-eight thousand dollars. That was oh, my wholesale, wow. Fee, right? Wow. And it still makes, I mean, that still make, you know, the number, the number still makes sense, you know. Right. And, and, yeah. But, you know, I just decided to buy it. You know, they had a couple of, you know. Um, things they wanted done. I said, no, nah, I don't want, like, well, one of them was like, Hey, we want to talk to the owner directly. Can you move out of the way? I'm like, no, it was 20 K. I wouldn't give a crap. Yeah, I do it. If I lose, yeah, 20 yeah. Yeah. but you know, you can drag out this out and my contract expires. You can come behind me and buy it. No, no, sure. right. yeah, I'm not saying yeah. they were gonna do that. I'm not saying they were going to do that, but I'm like, no, yeah. And no, uh, in, our, in our world, I think there's a lot of us to do it with integrity and character. Whenever I first started back in 07, we started back before, you know, right when the market was tanking. That's when we started. And we said, let's see if we can, you can be in this business, do it with honesty, integrity, and character. Let's show them the right way. And that's what we've always strived, strived to do ever since then is to, um, to do it that way. So there's a lot of us that do business that way. But you're right. There's a few out there that have been, they think nothing of cutting your throat. Mm -hmm. So you got to be careful when you're out there and you're new doing yep. that kind of stuff because they can do it to you. But it's always yeah, nice just, to be around our, you know, people like you who do it the right way yeah. and our groups who do it the right way. It's nice. Yeah, just cover oh. your behind. I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying these folks would have done that to me, but I just didn't like the risk that I was going to take. Yeah, exactly. No, I, that it was the risk. Yeah, yeah and then, right. and then I, I can take it down. So, like, if they weren't going to buy it, I'm like, you know what? Just forget it. If they're not going to agree to my terms, I'll, I'll just buy it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a well, good that's great. Well, listen. So we, uh, you know, we're the Real Estate of Mind show, and we always ask people, kind of in closing, what what do you do to keep your mind strong because obviously you've got you know people think well he's got millions of dollars in real estate well no you still it be, comes along with that is challenges every day yeah. you've got challenges how do you maintain how does javier maintain his mental strength through all this well i'll tell maybe you, you what, have, uh, or maybe you have no problems at all maybe you never have a problem you have to deal with i don't know 
you know, I, I don't really stress, you know, I, I think I'm, I'm, I went to get a checkup and I was like, I thought I was stressing. I went with the doctor and she's like, I'm like, you know, am, am I dying? Am I like high blood pressure? And she's like, no, you're like, you're just chill. I'm like, oh my gosh, I guess I don't really, st- uh, I don't stress out. But, um, you know, I really like, I'm, I'm, I have a lot of energy. It's really hard for me to disconnect. Like a weekend is not enough for me. Like if I, Friday, six o'clock work is done. Like Saturday and Sunday is not enough for me to like a hundred percent disconnect. Yeah. Probably the, the biggest challenge for me is to disconnect. And, um, I mean, I really enjoy what I do and spend time with my family and not be on my phone, things like that. But it's, it's super challenging. Uh, how, how do I kind of decompress or how do I deal with all that? Um, you know, I don't really have any, any secrets, right? Just, uh, you know, I, I just like, you know, I just, I just enjoy what I do. So, yeah. you know, I just, you know, I like to find good properties. I like to do real estate. Um, and that actually is not really, really even work for me. I just, I just enjoy it. I just spent, uh, I just recently did a, a career day with a local school. I've done it for six or seven years now. I speak to eighth graders. And the closing line that I said, I do the same presentation four times over and over again, like to all these different groups of kids. And I just did it. Uh, and, and the closing line I say is, if you find something you, that you love to do, you'll never, have to, you'll never have to work a day in your life. And I closed that line. It sounds like that's exactly what you're saying. You found something you love to do. And that's what that's what carries you through every day. And, and you don't have to feel like you're stressed out because you love what you do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, that definitely helps. And what definitely also helps is having the right team. Yeah. So it takes a lot of the, like the stuff that I'm not good at, right. They, yeah. they, they're, they're good at it. So it makes me look better. You know, we call that right butts, right seats. <laughs> yeah. Right butts, right seats. Yeah. We know all about that. We've been down that look good, Right. And, and, and right. that's kind of my wife's job too. Right. She's like, always makes me look good. Yeah. That's why I've got this one. Because God knows I don't look good. That's why I'm in the dark. Get the light on her face. So good. Yeah, there you go. Well, Javier, listen, tell me how they can reach you. If they want to learn about you and kind of see you. And I don't know if you have a site you go to or how they can connect with you. I'll yeah, sure. You can problem. find me on social media. You know, Javier Hinojo Jr. I'm the only, besides my dad, I'm the only Javier Hinojo, I think, in the whole country. You can find me on Facebook, on uh, Instagram. You know, you guys, I'll send you guys all my social media hang- uh, handles. I have a Facebook group, a billion dollar multifamily and commercial real estate. Feel free to to um, join that group. I also have a podcast coming out actually in, in about new, new, in the next few few days. Oh, so great. we'd love to have you guys on. Love great. to, for sure. Um, it's called the uh, the Naked Truth about real estate investing. And I do my first episode in my underwear. You know, why not? <laughs> no, I don't do it. As long it as your guests don't have to be naked. Yeah, is a guest required to do that? Because I don't know if you want to see me. Her maybe, not me. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, my first episode, I talk about how I sold my very first flip to a porn star. That was pretty, that true story. Oh, funny. <laughs> um, uh, oh, that'll be fun. That'll be good to yeah, watch. Yeah, and yeah, uh, love to be, love I mean, to be I mean, on. Let us know. A lot of mistakes. I, I can probably have a hundred episodes of all the mistakes that I've. Oh done. yeah. Oh yeah. But you learn a lot from those. That's why I learn, learn a lot. Um, you know, just feel free to reach out if anybody has any questions for sure. Thank you so much, Glenn and Amber, for having me on your show. It was a pleasure. Good luck with uh, the new move, and I, I appreciate you guys uh, having me on.